Hey, it's Joseph here. I have a difficult decision to make. I have two laptops here. One is Dell XPS 13 inch 2 in 1 and this one is Dell Inspiron 13 inch 7000 series. To be specific, this XPS's model number is 7390, whereas this one, Inspiron 13 inch, is actually 7391 even the model names are very similar. And because the specs are very similar as well, I'm having very difficult time choosing which one is the right one. And certainly not to rule out any other manufacturer and other laptops in this area where they are the competitors, but I had previously good experience with Dell, so I decided to go with Dell. Microsoft, I had good experience, but then at the end it wasn't so great. If you don't know the reason, do check out my video about Surface Pro 4, which I'm needing to replace with one of these devices. So I really haven't made up my decision on which one to keep. I need to return at least one of them. But before making the decision, let me go ahead and tell you the review of each of these devices in comparison so that you guys have better idea about my experience and my thoughts perhaps come to the decision at the end of the video so let's start from the exterior so this one is obviously black exterior it is sort of the shade of dark gray because it's not completely black because of the reflectiveness especially with the light here it's gonna appear more of a dark gray than black in simple Dell logo on the side as I have mentioned there are ports which is a DC charger the barrel plug which I don't really like and then there's a LED indicator of charging and this one also lights up if I charge this laptop through the Thunderbolt port and there's a full-size HDMI and keep that as a note as you don't have that on XPS so full-size HDMI port is definitely a plus. For some people, that's gonna be a deal breaker for XPS. And nothing on the front. And to the other side, there's micro SD card reader and a headphone jack, and then full-size USB-A port. Again, a win for Inspiron because there's full-size USB-A port, whereas XPS doesn't. Well, before we forget about that, let's go over XPS as well. So on one side, there's pen attached. So if I detach this, there's one USB-C, Thunderbolt. No HDMI, no USB-A, just USB-C. Clean and nice, but that's it. And to the front, actually there is a LED indicator of the power status of this. I see the LED light basically kind of moves through this bar. I don't know if you can see it, but as I charge it up, it kind of moves through and as it sleeps, it basically tells you sort of the power state of this laptop, which is very useful than seeing it on the side of a laptop. So that is definitely a nice touch, but it is not going to deter me from one decision to the other. And on the other side, there is a micro SD card reader, the same as Inspiron, and then USB-C Thunderbolt port. You can charge from both sides through USB-C, but only USB-C. There's no full-size HDMI port, USB-A port. If those two ports, the HDMI and USB-A port is really important for you, then Inspiron has it for you. For me particularly, I see less and less me using USB-A port and also I'm needing less of full-size HDMI as I don't really connect this laptop anywhere really frequently. It just lives by itself. So USB-C charging is there actually on both sides. So that's more important for me than full-size HDMI and USB-A port. And for that point, I have multiple of these USB-C hubs in the house and at least one in my bag that's gonna have full-size HDMI port and USB-A port. So I'm happy to carry this around, at least keep one in my bag so I have it around me. And that usually takes care of all the things I need. But if you're a type of person who's needing to go around the office all the time and can't have a bag around you all the time for these type of things and you're having to present through the laptop via full-size HDMI frequently, then 
that is a deal breaker for you. Okay, enough about the exterior ports. Let me go back to the comparing two. So other than those two ports, you can kind of expect the similar things except the charging portion of this USB-C. So I have to get into a bit of detail in that, but for XPS, actually, I can charge with 60 watt USB-C charger, 65 watt, 90 watt. It'll take anything from both sides. On either side, I can connect and charge and it'll do anything fine. However, when it comes to Inspiron, not only it has charging on this side only, if I charge 65 watt charger, which is this tiny little charger that I have, it's from Rev Power. I love this charger and it has USB-A port for your charging. So if you actually carry this around, pair with XPS, if you need to charge something through USB-A port, that's great. You can charge up your cameras, everything. I really love this one. And it's got USB-C charger. So you can have your USB-C cable and connect that and it's gonna charge no problem. The original adapter for this XPS was actually 45 watt. So this is actually faster charging for XPS. Whereas this one actually included 65 watt. And if I connect 65 watt, although that is pushing 65 watt, for some reason this does not recognize it in a way it should. Actually, there's a very strange result. If I charge with 65 watt, then this laptop will basically throttle and some of the keys wouldn't work immediately, the mouse would not, it will stutter and lag. It's a very strange behavior that I see. There's no error message, nothing. It says it's charging, but basically it throttles. I think there's something going on in the background that is messing up with the laptop actually. However, if I charge anything extra or even have this hub connected so that it is going through the hub, then this kind of downgrades from, I guess, 65 watt to maybe 64, 63, maybe 60 watt. Then the laptop just displays that it is a slow charger and there's no lagging behavior that I have experienced with 65. So that just kind of results in okay, I need to go slower charger in order to charge this laptop or at least work with this laptop. So it is all weird. And to add on to that, if I use another Rev Power charger, which I like, this one has two USB-C ports for power delivery and it delivers 90 watts. That is a lot. And it is just a tad bigger than this one here, the baby 65 watt. If I charge this laptop with the 90 watt charger, no problem whatsoever. No message, nothing, it'll behave just fine. Even if I connect through these devices, unless I have like other devices connected drawing power, it is going to charge this laptop without any error message or weird behavior. So for whatever reason, this laptop requires you to have much higher wattage than at least 65 for you to charge this laptop in a more natural way. Otherwise, we're gonna have to carry around that barrel charger. I just don't really like this. I don't know why we continue with this behavior whilst you can charge your laptops with USB-C. It is so much easier. It charges your phone, other devices, and I think we just need to start moving on. Anyways, I highly recommend these two chargers. It's been great. It is like the latest technology, the GAN charger, the gallium nitrate, which is a highly efficient resistors that allows you to have better charging in much smaller package. I highly recommend them 65 and 90 watt charger paired with any odd power delivery cable, USB-C. You can just carry one like this Keep it in your bag and then you're good to go. And you can charge your laptop anywhere. It will charge your phone, it will charge other cameras, other devices that receive USB-C. Seems like Inspiron is slightly still holding on to the olden technology. I don't know what's going on, but there is that. And that was a major kind of count off for me. 
even more so than the XPS not having full-size HDMI and USB-A port. And again, for some of you, that really matters and the charging perhaps matters much less for you. But for me to count off points, that was a big count off for me on Inspiron for the charging issue with the USB-C. And again, going back to the build quality a bit, the hinge here has a little bit of flex as I try to pick it up, the hinge just kind of pushes in. There's not really a good way to grab this. I think it's due to sort of how the pen is garaged in there and then it introduces sort of a flex. This is made out of plastic, so I guess there's gonna be some flex in it. But overall, things are a little bit more clunkier, if I would say, than XPS. There's a bigger gap in between hinges and parts. I guess XPS is more premium. You're paying premium for higher quality, build quality, whereas Inspiron you're not. So you can kind of expect those things. Um, at the bottom, it's simple, some rubber feet with the air grill and the speaker grill on either side. Same thing on XPS. On the bottom, there is a long rubber on the front and back and then speakers and the air grill as well. Actually, there's air vents inside of the hinge as well. I'll get to that in a bit as I open up, but both of the laptop is serviceable by just opening up this bottom panel, which is a big plus for me because Surface Pro 4, I couldn't service it because I couldn't open up the laptop even though battery died. This one, if battery dies, if something happens to the laptop for certain components, I can perhaps service it, or at least it will be easier because I attempted repairing the battery of Surface Pro 4. Sadly, I ended up cracking the screen. So I am counting on these screws to be opened and be serviceable. So there's that. Design-wise, XPS wins sort of the more elegant look of the grill. Sort of the build quality is much better the hinges as well. There's a little rubber behind the hinge as well that opens up and touches the desk. So let's go ahead and open both of them. By the way, this pen for XPS actually sticks to the side of the laptop. So XPS just kind of carries around like this. There is a big problem with that, which is the same problem I had with Surface Pro 4. If I put the laptop inside of a bag, it gets knocked out and this ends up scratching your laptop or it always gets lost somewhere inside of your bag or the worst case scenario, the pen gets snagged onto your bag and then it just drops and then sometimes it falls with the tip and then it ends up breaking your pen. So whilst you can carry your pen like this, it's a bit of annoyance. So I kind of learn when I'm using Surface Pro 4 to always put my laptop in like this so that this doesn't really get knocked around too much. If you do like this, it will surely get knocked around and then the pen gets smashed with the laptop. So I advise you put it in like this and pen stays above or just separate it and put it elsewhere. But then you're gonna forget about it next time you pull out your laptop. So that's why I think the pen garage of Inspiron really works out. There is the pen garage. Nicely tucked in there. You're not gonna lose it even inside of the bag. It just stores in there and when it is ready to be used on a two-in-one setting. I can just grab it from the back here, like that, and then start using and note-taking. And I sort of wrote a bunch of notes comparing these two. So thing about Inspiron is on the right side, and then things about XPS is on the left side. And I just try to write down notes and compare them. How the pen is working, I don't know about some of you who may or may not care about pen so much, but the storage of the pen, Inspiron definitely wins a point here. It's not to say the pen of Inspiron is superior. So there are a few nicks about this pen here. So just to go over the pen itself, 
I've done some research on these two pens. So first of all, this pen is much cheaper because it actually comes with the laptop. You don't need to buy this, but if you were to buy this separately, it is $50. Whereas this pen, I had to buy it separately. It's about $90. By the look of it, it's not too different other than just the length of it, but it actually is slightly heavier and I would say it is slightly thicker as well but it has more rubbery tip so it actually feels better when you're writing there was no additional tip that was shipped with this pen it's just plasticky tip and then it makes that sound when you touch on the screen whereas this one it's not plasticky tip it actually writes a lot better and these two pens actually have some problem of when you're grabbing your pen like this, you can accidentally push in one of the front button which cause the pen to erase something. On a Microsoft Surface Pen, it was kind of like this and then you have a back button and also that works as an eraser. So you write something and then you can erase it and then continue writing and if you need to right click it, there's a button that you kind of have to press a bit hard than just accidentally pressing it. So that was really well implemented. However, these Dell pens, there are two buttons here. The front one which causes to erase. The button that is above here causes the right click and then you can lasso some elements with this button. So you don't really accidentally hit this one but the erase button you can accidentally hit and as you write and then kind of click that, you're gonna erase what you just wrote. So, I don't know, it's kind of weird behavior. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to grab this in a way to avoid that. It is so round that you have to like realign it with your hand. It doesn't feel as nice. And same problem here, it is more of a volume rocker type of pen design. It's not separated button, but the same thing happens where I try to grab the pen and then I accidentally hit that button as I write, it just erases it. So both of the pen actually have that problem. Nobody wins anything on this one, but the Dell Active Pen, the $90 one for XPS, actually has a back button. So you can press this to cause a different function and that functionality is available through Bluetooth. So for me, what I have done is if I press the back button once, it goes into snipping mode and I can snip something and then I can either edit that or tag it. So that's how I would go about snipping portion of a drawing and then tell them fix this or something like that. And then just I can send that image copy and paste onto a mail so that I can quickly notate something to someone else. So that's how I exactly use this pen on Surface Pro devices where I had a back button. And that one actually doubles up as an eraser, whilst this pen doesn't. There's that. And one little trick that I have found about this pen is actually there are two LEDs that are built into this pen here. So there's one LED on the back where this one turns on when you're trying to synchronize with Bluetooth. You hold the back button for a long time and that turns on and it goes into synchronize mode. And also on the volume rocker type of button on the front here has a little LED as well which is almost invisible and in order to turn that on actually you hold those two buttons down at the same time for two three seconds and then it blinks either once or twice and apparently there's a different pen language or technology from AES to MPP. One technology is for Wacom and the other one is Entrig or the Surface, this type of device. So actually you can switch between this laptop versus if I hold that button down and then that goes into that mode and I can start writing on this laptop and it just works. So I can just write on it. So yeah, this pen works for both of the laptops. Whereas the one that came with the Inspiron only works with this laptop and does not work with XPS. Speaking of pen working for multiple machines, the Surface Pro pen actually works on this laptop. So you can use the same functionality, the back eraser function, and then you can write on it too. So it is apparent that Inspiron uses the same 
pen or touch technology as Surface or the Microsoft. So I see very similar behavior and sort of the characteristics of the ink that is coming out of the Surface devices. There's much less difference from this pen to this pen other than it being plasticky one. But the fact that only this pen fits in the pen garage, I'm kind of stuck with this plasticky pen. The pen styling is very similar to the Surface device as I said. But the more expensive pen, which writes fine on certain applications such as OneNote, or the Windows um, snipping app, that sort of thing. But the lines are a bit more jagged. I, As I draw a circle, I'll show it a little bit here, but as I draw more rounded shapes, there are straight segments in between, which kind of bothers me, but when I write small, it's not as noticeable, but certain type of application is really noticeable, especially when I tried it on Review Bluebeam Review to write comments on. The pen writing difference between the Inspiron pen, the Surface similar pen versus the pen with XPS wrote very differently. The writing on review with XPS was terrible. I can actually tweak some options to make it slightly look better but the sensitivity and just the writing style it looked a whole lot better with Inspiron so if I were to comment something on the drawing and somebody else is seeing it looks like five-year-old has written on the XPS whereas if I write with Inspiron it at least looks professional with the Inspiron and I think it is because the application took more of the Surface, the Microsoft approach, than what XPS has. So it might be just dependent on the application. That was just a one application that I really noticed a difference in terms of the pen behavior, Inspiron wins. One point for Inspiron where XPS couldn't make up. And I'm sorry this video is becoming very long, but I wanted to be thorough because I invested a lot of time on reviewing both of the devices and comparing to evidently I'm having a difficult time choosing one. Okay, let's put the pen aside and just kind of show you the keyboard side of these two devices. So whilst looking at the keyboard and the hinge area, there are actually air vents on the hinge of XPS and there is a slight vent on here as well. That is much more concealed whereas there's giant gap here on Inspiron and there is a big air vent there too. When the laptop is spinning, I can certainly feel heat rising from that corner. Okay, speaking of heat, this XPS actually generates much less heat. I noticed the fan going off much lesser on this laptop than this one when I'm doing the same exact task. Sometimes even on idle, for no apparent reason, Inspiron will kick off with the fan and it just blows air and I can quite hear it. And the fan noise is actually kind of worse on this one. When the fan is going off, it is more of a kind of very soft wind noise on here. It is much more of like a hissing noise and I can feel the heat rising. You can hear it going off and it's just not as well managed on Inspiron. Inspiron actually has Core i7 10510U CPU, whereas the XPS 1065G7 CPU. It has much lesser base clock and turbo boost as well. So in terms of like the raw power and performance of CPU, supposedly Inspiron does much better than XPS. However, my benchmarking wasn't exactly that. XPS actually won in terms of benchmarking. The CPU and the graphics score is much better on XPS than Inspiron. So it draws much less power. It is more 
heat and power efficient and performs better at a pinch. So the point goes to XPS in terms of power and the heat department. They're directly related. So I would give that score to XPS. In terms of touchpad, they're actually about the same size. I don't really see the touchpad difference in terms of size. However, for some reason, XPS feels like glass and smooth. It is much more pleasant to kind of do the touch, whereas this one is very matte. I don't know what coating that this has. It does feel like glass, but it kind of has that plasticky matte finish to it. In terms of the touchpad behavior, it behaved exactly fine. I would just score touchpad as almost identical if any XPS is slightly better. In terms of the keyboard itself, I still have a very mixed feeling about this one because notably people feel completely differently about the keyboard. I thought I would be fine, but keyboard on XPS is very clicky. It doesn't have much travel. It is very similar to MacBook, the butterfly keyboard. So it is very clicky and it makes a lot of like a clicky noise as well and at first it's not as pleasant it's not something that you're used to but I don't know if you're coming from MacBook or someone who's used to clicky keyboard then I guess you'll be fine but I am not my keyboard has a full travel on my desktop and the Surface Pro actually had a really good keyboard as well, although it had a deck flex. I know some people are really put off by this keyboard, but for me, it's okay. It's, it's enough to get by, just like kind of trackpad. Whereas Inspiron has a really good keyboard. It feels fine. I do some typing, I do write emails, but I don't write scripts. I don't write long emails or letters to someone. So typing experience is not as important for me. For me, more important is keys being expected places so I can hit shortcuts easily. And in terms of key travel and actual individual key feeling is not as important for me. In terms of layout, they're almost identical. The enter key and the key above it, it is slightly different looking. The control key here is slightly bigger. The keys are occupying the entire width of the laptop on XPS. Whilst Inspiron, you got about maybe three quarters of an inch on either side. So it is kind of sacrifice. And I guess the keys are slightly more put together, especially the modifier keys on one side. It is much shorter, but I wouldn't really give points for XPS because that's really minor difference. But in terms of size, actually, it has difference. So if I put the laptops to a corner together, there's about half inch on the width and then another half inch to the height. And supposedly by the spec, the Inspiron is much heavier than XPS, a tad bigger, but if somebody hadn't told me that, I would even say they feel almost identical. If you're really that picky about overall size, XPS wins, but for me, it doesn't matter. Half inch at this size, it's already tiny. Either way, it works. I kind of switched around, didn't I? So Inspiron right here, XPS here. So another aspect that I wanna compare is the overall finish interior wise. So Inspiron has this kind of, I would say plastic. It is not necessarily a fingerprint magnet, so it doesn't really look bad, but it's a plastic feel. Whenever you're typing on, your palm rests on this sort of plastic material. Whereas the XPS, it has this kind of rubbery, I think they call it like a recycled bamboo fiber or something that is environmentally friendly. And I think it's friendly to my palm as well. It feels a lot better resting my palm. So if you kind of care about the premium feel, again, XPS is better in that department, but it's not necessarily a point for me because I'm okay with the plasticky feel. And before I forget, I do want to mention there is a fingerprint sensor for both of the laptops. I don't really care much about fingerprint sensor as security is not really an issue for me. But if you care for that, both laptops do exactly the same. But just note that it is on the far up 
right corner. So if you're expecting a delete key to be there and hitting the delete key, that's going to be your power button. So you're going to turn off or sleep your laptop. So just keep that in mind if you're looking to buy any of these laptops. But in terms of security element, one thing that I don't personally care for, but the IR camera is available on XPS, whilst Inspiron doesn't. So whilst this is more consumer level, this can be more businessy, professional laptop. So this laptop shows the fact that it cares about security a bit more. So you can use Windows Hello with this laptop, whilst you cannot. It is both 720p camera, I believe. XPS wins that department, not necessarily point for me as that doesn't matter for me. Going back to the finish and the feel of the keyboard DAC, actually Inspiron has these rubber feet. There's one, two, three, four of them, the little small feet. And that is there so that when you fold the laptop, that actually hits the table rather than the keys. So it doesn't really smudge against it. But the fact that keyboard kind of protrudes out more so than this laptop, it kind of feels like, it kind of feels like the surface other than those four feet are rubbing against the table. This is an even desk, it's a hard surface, but it feels like something else is rubbing against the desk. Whereas on XPS, just because the overall surface is not plasticky material, and also there's a rubber feet, much bigger rubber feet above the keyboard area, and when I fold the laptop the same way, it feels like the rubber is actually hitting the desk more so than laptop. It doesn't move as much. It's actually doing the job. And I think it has to do with the fact that keyboard is much flatter. It doesn't travel as much. And when you flip it all the way down, you probably heard that a little bit. So this kind of like smacks down as the hinge is not as solid there's like a hard point and all of a sudden it becomes very loose and then just loses the resistance whereas this one feels more solid all the way through and it just rests and again i think it has to do with the fact that behind xps there's actually a long rubber that is along here so that is hitting the back of the screen Whereas Inspiron, there's only very flimsy two feet like that, that is going up against the screen and the overall body is more loose. Therefore, there you go. You just kind of drop it. I'm not forcing it, but it's just like, whereas this one, yeah, there is a little bit of kind of let go point, but it's not as much. The hinge feels a lot better. And another thing to notice is that this one, there's nothing that is holding the screen from flipping up again. Whereas XPS actually has a magnet. It feels like there's a magnet. So it kind of puts the screen together when even if the screen is backwards together. So it is not going to wobble. It just stays put. And when you write, that is very apparent. There's no screen flex. Whereas on Inspiron, when I hold from the side, there's that sort of wobble. It doesn't feel as solid. Sometimes I like writing in this sort of vertical mode because it is much easier to take notes that way. Whilst the overall screen size is very similar, Inspiron, there's a big chin on the bezel. So this is a regular 16 by nine ratio. And then on the XPS, it actually is much thinner all around and there's not much of a bezel on the bottom either. Therefore it is 16 by 10 ratio. Overall XPS wins in terms of ratio of the screen. So whilst Inspiron overall price is $300 cheaper, it included the pen. I had to buy a pen for XPS and that is factored in the $300. It would have been about $200 difference if I didn't count the pen. So pen, again, 
wins in terms of price too, but the fact that Isbrun comes with 4K screen, and if I were to configure 4K screen onto XPS, because I can configure it, it's $300 extra to configure 4K screen onto XPS. However, I'm not going to give a point to Inspiron because I don't need 4K on 13 inch screen laptop. Actually, it is not really beneficial. It's gonna eat up more battery. It's more things to think about for the laptop. Potentially more issue in terms of screen scaling. You don't really need 4K in 13 inch laptop. I think it is there, it's nice, because I have to pay $300 extra for the XPS. So I feel like I'm getting a very good deal. 4K screen on a laptop at a much cheaper price makes sense, but no, I don't think I'm actually winning anything on Inspiron. So I'm not gonna give a point to Inspiron for that regard. If you look at it, the ratio is much better on XPS and actually it gives me much more screen real estate to work with. It allows me to have more information or see more information at the bottom of the screen. So I actually prefer that and when I play 4K videos and whatnot, I cannot tell the difference from regular viewing distance. So maximum brightness, this laptop is 4K, this one is 1080p. I couldn't tell the difference between two in terms of resolution. And it is apparent on the camera too, but the brightness of the Inspiron is less than XPS. Sorry, I realized there's sound that is being played. The drawings actually look better on XPS. You just have to take my word for it. Even if this is 4K, it looks a lot better in XPS. So I would give 0.2 XPS in terms of screen size and the brightness difference in XPS. It makes the difference. You heard the sound a little bit and it is not as apparent on lower volume on the Inspiron, if I maximize the volume of the speaker, there's vibration, there's distortion, whereas in XPS, it sounds really good. They're both bottom firing, so on this configuration, it's gonna fire up, but on a regular position, it's gonna fire down. It's here. I personally don't care much about speaker, so I'm not giving XPS a point on that regard. However, if you care about speaker quality, XPS is there for you. There's a lot of times I had to write something on the keyboard and then use a pen to reach out and write. When I do that, XPS felt more secure because of the hinge has more weight to it. Whereas on Inspiron, it just gives so much that like I had to hold the screen and write. So I would say win on XPS in that department. It's not too different. It, the difference is not big enough for me to give a point to XPS, but just know that sort of the screen is more noticeably moving on Inspiron, whereas in XPS it's much less. Maybe that's here. Kind of see that? So Inspiron wobbles more there's more give there's quite a lot of movement when i rest my hand and just overall wherever i put it the laptop kind of wobbles whereas this one doesn't really wobble it flexes a bit but laptop doesn't wobble i think it has to do with the fact that just screen just lifts as i push on one side the other side lifts up and then if i let go it just pushes back together. It's just not as pleasant to write just because of that. And because of the overall quality, I would even give a point to XPS. I can't keep track of all the points that I've given, but in terms of that, I think XPS pretty much won for the overall build quality department. Yeah, the edges are very sharp on the Inspiron on this side, it almost looks and feels like this laptop is not meant to be folded like this. XPS, it's all rounded, so it feels a lot better even if it's folded this way. In terms of overall laptop performance, as I have said, XPS basically wins overall performance. At least on V-Ray Benchmark, I ran that because it 
both compares the CPU only performance versus CPU and then GPU working together score and I'll flash that on the screen. There's very minimal difference. I don't think anyone is going to notice in terms of performance difference. Supposedly the CPU that's been used for XPS has a better graphics performance. But again, I don't think it is going to matter to me as much. I do use graphics whenever I'm doing some uh, Photoshop or SketchUp. I will probably do some of those tasks in here, especially Photoshop, you can use a brush with a pen. So it kind of does make sense. And I may do video editing on this too. So video kind of makes sense. SketchUp does rely somewhat on graphics card as well. The iGPU is better on XPS than the Inspiron. The name for it is Iris Plus for XPS. This one is like Intel HD graphics. So it's better on XPS on spec wise. In terms of me actually experiencing the performance difference, I did notice the difference in terms of overall heat and the fan sound difference. None of the devices making any noise, but when I actually played the 4K screen, the video, the fan was starting to go off on the Inspiron, whereas XPS remained calm. It is due to the fact that it is pushing more pixels on this one, and it is not. Again, it kind of goes back to the screen resolution kind of thing, but power and performance is much better managed on XPS. And supposedly this one has 32 gigabytes of Optane memory. I think the Optane is meant to do a better reading and writing of storage. When I did a crystal disk mark benchmarking, the scores actually looked very similar, but I don't think those numbers would make difference in the real life. And as you can see, both of the screen is very glossy. I may put a matte screen protector over it to have better sort of reflection issues. I just hate to see fingerprint all over, especially I'm gonna rest my palm on it. And it actually writes better if I have a matte surface, which is what I had done for my Surface Pro and I just loved it. So I'll try and purchase one and put over whatever the device that I decide to keep. Okay, and actually something that I forgot to mention is the battery life. I have done extensive tests with both of the devices and to be fair, if they're just turned on for the same tasks, same configuration, they actually last exactly the same. More intensive tests, you can expect it to last anywhere between two to four hours on just more graphic intensive or more performance based tasks last two hours at the least. If I just leave the laptop on more idle task and there's an app for testing the battery and stuff, but if I do that, then from 100% to 50%, it took seven and a half hours at that point. I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to leave this on for another seven and a half hours. I gotta go somewhere. So, so I actually stopped the testing at that point, but it can easily last 14 hours for both of these laptops. The battery is fantastic. I couldn't see much of a difference. After doing the long session with this making of this video, I come to realization that it is worth keeping XPS rather than Inspiron. So yeah, that's my very honest opinion about these two laptops and that's my conclusion. I'll keep this one. So with that, I would like to say if you have liked this content, please like and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for sticking around throughout this long video with me and I will see you next time on the next video. Bye.